So we meet again. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of April 7th. Now you're watching a show that is purely dedicated to finding hot OTC and penny stocks. Every day I am looking for stocks that have potential to make us money. And I'm doing my research on every single exchange. The OTC, the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange. Why? <laughs> because a penny stock is nothing more than any stock under five bucks and they're on every single market. Today we're going to look at one particular stock that was off my radar. I was completely oblivious to this. This was brought to my attention by a follower by the name of Velmore. Thank you, Belmore. We appreciate it. We've got this live streaming event we do every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, where we talk to our followers and they share with us tickers they want us to look at. Well, she brought this one to our attention. This is ticker HCNWF, Hypercharged Networks. It has been running like crazy for the last four days, literally flying to the moon, jumping from 36 cents to $2.39 before it fell back to $1.91. So why was it off my radar? Well, I'm going to be honest. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't. It is a glitch with Think or Swim. Let me show you. So this is Think or Swim. This is the trading platform I use to do all of my research on. And my primary way to do that is through a scan. So I'll pull up the scan and I will put in double zero one to three dollars. That's my favorite penny stock scan. Now this is the problem. Think or Swim splits your search in half. Over here they have ascending and descending. This is from the letter A down and descending is from the letter Z up. But they only look at 2,000 stocks. That's as deep as they go. So the problem is there's a gap that doesn't get covered. If we look at the ascending, bring this up alphabetically. There's your A. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and it goes to F. Now come over here to descending. This starts from the letter Z and works up. We are going from Z to N. So we have G, H, I, J, K, L, M. All missing. Seven letters that don't even get into the search because the search doesn't go deep enough. And that H was right smack dab in the middle. Now the only way you can get around that is to narrow that gap in your search. Maybe take this to one cents to three dollars. But then I'm missing the peripheral activities that I really want to see. So as I said, there is a glitch in Think or Swim. You can miss a gap right in the middle of the search and you could miss a hot stock just like this one. Ah, but we're not going to miss out because we got loyal viewers like Velmore keeping us in the loop. So what can I tell you about hypercharged networks? Well, I guess the first thing you ought to know is if you're going to do research on it, it could be a bit confusing. I have found some conflicting information. For example, when did the company start? I got three dates, 2009, 2011, and 2021. Huge differences here. But I think this all boils down to the fact that they've had different names. They had Oasis Charger, Hypercharge Networks, and Juice Bar. And Juice Bar looks to be the most recent. This is their DBA doing business as. Now the company just came on the U.S. exchange January 6th of this year. So it is for all practical purposes a startup company. They started making deals last April in 2022 and they didn't get their first installation until December of 2022. But since then they've been making lots of deals and installing lots of these electric chargers. They are installing them in Canada and the U.S. They've already got 600 installations planned for over 100 cities in the United States. So how did Hypercharge Networks finish on Friday? Not bad. She had a huge bounce. Finished the day at $1.93 with over 43% gains. That is her fourth day of huge bounces. She is on the middle tier of the OTC. We call this the better tier, the QB. It's better because they have to audit their financials. They've got to get a CPA to do all the accounting. This makes them more transparent, more trustworthy. 
Speaking of trustworthy, they got a slew of green ticks down here. We like to see these. These are very reassuring. We've got that verified profile and that transfer agent I am always talking to you about. If you're going to be in an OTC stock for a long hold, you want as much verified information as you can get. First off, investing in a QB stock so you know their financials are audited. Two, you want that verified profile on that transfer agent verified because you want as much validated information about that company if you're going to be holding it for a long time. Now, if you're just doing a quick swing or a day trade, you really don't have to worry about that. They've also got independent directors. You got to have these if you're going to uplift. So we know they use them to get from the pink to the QB. And if they have plans to go up any higher, they're going to need them then as well. We got a bonus here penny stock exempt. This is a great thing to see folks. This reassures me they are not a startup risk. What I mean by that is that the company's been in business for at least three to five years with millions of dollars in assets and they've kept up with their financials. They've proven to us they're responsible and reliable. So as I said, they are not a risky startup company anymore. And the last thing I want to point out here is this stock promotion. This comes up whenever a company hires another company to do editorials or articles on them. So we're aware there is a promotion going on. Now this isn't a hype. These aren't lies. It's just information about the company to keep them in front of the investors. However, there has been a problem surrounding this issue that I'm going to cover. So what is this company about? Well, you've probably already guessed. Hypercharge Networks is a leading provider of electric vehicle charging solutions, competitively positioned for rapid growth as the world transitions to electrified transportation. Hypercharge's innovative and easy to use charging solutions create a win-win for drivers and businesses to charge their vehicles, providing reoccurring revenue opportunities for business owners, all while reducing their carbon footprint. These have been being put in front of stores, restaurants, office buildings. They're being put right down the streets of cities. They are also being put into garages of homes. So anywhere these can be put and they are being put everywhere. Now the company did a couple of deals a few years ago that are not showing up in any of the news and the only way you become aware of them is to go into a financial. So we are looking at the most recent financial from December of 2022. They tell us here that the company was incorporated in Canada, British Columbia in 2018. It was November of 2022 they came on to the Canadian exchange and in January of 2023 they came on to the US exchange. Now they inform us here that in 2021, the company acquired Spark Charging Solutions and in 2022, they acquired CoSource Information. They go on to tell us that the Spark transaction combines two established teams with experience in EV technology, software, and hardware. Spark, they supply and install the EV charging stations across Canada and holds Canadian distribution rights to charging stations manufactured by Oasis Charger Corporation, based in Connecticut. The coal source asset acquisition of the plug and charge concept provides an additional tool to be integrated into the company's existing operations. The combined teams will continue to grow as Hypercharge scales strategic operations and support of existing and new clients across North America. They're getting a lot of chargers out there. First it was just a few, then it was a couple hundred, and now they're working on a few thousand. But how are you going to find them? How do you know where these are? You know how their mobile app. The mobile app is going to come in real handy, not just for locating electric chargers with this company, but with other companies that they're working with. And you're going to see that information in the news. Now, the app does everything you would want it to do. First off, locate an electric charger. I mean, there's not a lot of them yet, right? I think there's like 15,000 in the country, about, and we need 200,000 of them. So this has a map. You're going to be able to find all the electric chargers that are on their system in their network. Then you're going to be able to monitor the progress. Maybe you're in a restaurant eating dinner. You can look and see how much charge you've got going. Turn it on, turn it off right from your phone. But they also have an RFID card, so you can just tap the machine with that card and that'll turn it off or on. And of course, they've got a wallet built into the app so you can pay right through your phone. You can either put money on account or you can pay as you go. 
as most of us are accustomed to. Now let's go get some information about this company over at the OTC and then jump into the news and see what's going on right now. If you recall, I told you that I was completely oblivious to this stock. Had no clue she even existed, so I had no idea what was happening on the charts. Well, I heard telltale that the company has been halted a couple times over the last few days because she was running too hard. I don't know if that's true, but I did find at the end of Friday she was halted. At 3.15 in the afternoon, she was running too hot, so they just shut her down. That's what they call a single stock circuit breaker. They shut her down normally for about 5, 10, 15 minutes, and then they turn her back on. And if she starts running hot again, they'll turn her off for 30 minutes to an hour until she cools off, then they'll turn it back on. So that has somehow messed with the volume. I don't know how, I've never seen this before, but look at this. They're telling us that on Friday, she did zero shares. <laughs> that is not true. She did millions of shares. They also tell us that she is doing an average of 1.5 million shares a day over the last 30 days. Well, that's inaccurate. I mean, it is true, it's an average, but she only hit a million shares for the first time four days ago. She never got close to a million shares until four days ago. How do I know? Because I've got an excellent resource of information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not here right now. I've taken myself out of the picture because no matter where I put myself, I was hiding information I need to share with you. I need you to see it. But don't you worry. I'll be back. Okay. We are over here at Yahoo Finance and we are focusing in on this button right here. Historical data. An excellent resource of information, folks. You can look up any stock for any day and you can get the start price, the close price, the high, the low, or the volume. So I am going all the way back to the very first day that Hypercharge came on the market, January 6th. She was selling at a dollar a share then and she sold 125 shares the very first day. No, we don't add three zeros to any of these numbers. They are what they are. The next day she sold 133 shares. Day three, four, five, and six, she didn't sell anything. Day seven and eight, she's finally starting to sell a couple thousand shares. Now I'm going to start to scroll through here so you can see the day she's not selling anything and the day she is and how much she's selling. There's a nice jump. We're up to 87,000 shares now. Woo, there's 142,000. So we're starting to make some leaps. But look at that jump. That's incredible, folks. This was our high, 142,000, and we just jumped to virtually 12 million shares on April 3rd. On April 4th, it jumped to 16 million shares. On the day I learned about it, she did 7.2 million, and Friday, she did 9.6 million shares. So don't be believing that zero over at the OTC market. She is hot, folks. She's pouring a lot of shares on the market right now, and the charts are showing a lot of heat, and that's why we are looking at it. Let's jump into that share structure now. All right, the company has 61.9 million outstanding. They claim to have 26.3 million unrestricted. Unrestricted shares are shares on the market, which is basically the definition for float. But they say the float is 17.8 million as of January of this year, which could be right, but I'm not sure. How do I know? And I can't find these in the financials. They just don't tell us. So the only resource I've got is Google, and I only found it once. In all the pages, I mean, I could start diving into the pages, but in the search, I only found one number, 44 million. I have no clue what the float is, folks. Could be 17, 26, or 44 million, or none of the above. All we know for fact is it is under 61.9 million. Looking at the financials, well, the company's financials are growing. The end of their fiscal year is August. So at the end of August 2022, they had $369,000. This is the page we had those three zeros behind any of the numbers. Now, if you come to the quarterly, there's that 293 in August of 2022. Well, look at the two quarters before it. You see how fast she's growing. She jumped from 2,000 to 54,000 to 293,000 to 911,000. So she is growing by leaps and bounds. It is actually exponential at this rate. And we've got another financial that is due right now, which I am very interested in seeing. Now let's take a look at that balance sheet on the annual. 
She's got a total assets of 7.1 million. We've got to add three zeros here too. And of that, 5.1 million of it is in cash in the bank. Total liabilities, just about 1 million. So they're strong in their assets and their revenues are continually climbing quarter after quarter. So things are looking good for them. Disclosures. Well, let's see here. We got no disclosures since 2021 and all of their financials are caught up. We're just waiting for that next one to come out. So let's jump on over into that news. So this news goes back to February. You're not going to have much more news than that. And the first and the last two pieces of news are the ones I want to dive into here, but I want you to see the headlines here because they're making more deals. Hypercharge announces EV charging for Orver Group properties in the United States and Canada. Hypercharge supplies EV charging stations to Czech Media Group. Hypercharge supplies 748 EV charging stations to major landmark development in Surrey. Um, Hypercharge announces 128 EV charging stations at Lark Group Development. And you can see how quickly these are coming out. This is from uh, March 22nd to April 3rd. So, I mean, there's like four deals in one month. They are doing this very quickly considering they just came on the market in January. So, I want to jump into this piece of news that came out on the 1st of March and the one that just came out on Friday. So, let's jump into that first one. Hypercharge announces first roaming agreement with Electric Circuit, enabling users to access over 4,250 public charging stations. The company is pleased to announce its first roaming agreement with Electric Circuit. The partnership enables Hypercharge members to access Electric Circuit's 4,000 plus public charging stations and reciprocally allows Electric Circuit members to access Hypercharge's rapidly growing network of public charging stations. Today's announcement is facilitated by both Hypercharge's and Electric Circuit's participation in the Charge Hub Passport Program in Canada, which allows charging networks to enter into revenue sharing agreements with other operators on the platform. For EV drivers, both networks are available to activate and pay via Charge Hub mobile app, enabling frictionless charging experience. By participating in Charge Hub Passport, we look forward to continuing to grow the number of stations available to hypercharger users through additional roaming agreements. So they're making deals with other companies who are doing the same thing and they're all working together. So by being with one company, you're actually with all of them. But the company itself is putting out their own chargers and they're doing that at an alarming rate right now. Now that next piece of news, this is very important. Hypercharge responds to OTC markets request on recent promotional activities. There was some questions here and I'm just going to read what they say. On Monday, April 3rd, OTC markets informed the company that it became aware of certain promotional activities concerning the company and its common shares traded on the marketplace. On March 14, 2023, the company entered into an advertising agreement with Gold Standards Media, whereby Gold Standard, along with its affiliate Future Money Trends, Wealth Research Group, and Portfolio Wealth Group, would provide investor relations advertising services to the company. The service providers are third-party marketing advertising firms. The appointment of the service providers the nature of the relationship between the company and the service providers as well as the compensation to be paid to the service providers were publicly disclosed in a news release on March 22nd, which can be found under the company's profile. The company does not believe the statements in the marketing materials and the newsletters and the emails are materially false or misleading. The company understands this promotional activity coincided with the increased trading activity in the common shares beginning on April 3rd. The company does not believe the promotional activities were the primary factor in the increase in trading volume in the common shares. Rather, the company believes the promotional materials drew attention to the company's recent commercial developments which have been disclosed in recent news releases and regulatory filings, causing the increase in trading volume. 
In particular, on March 29th, the company announced its anticipated installation of 748 chargers at the upcoming King George Hub development in Surrey, British Columbia. And on March 31st, the company announced its anticipated installation of 128 chargers at the upcoming City Center 4 development in Surrey, British Columbia. To management's knowledge, no officers, directors, or controlling shareholders have sold securities of the company within the past 90 days. In addition, the company's management is not aware of any third-party service providers who have sold or purchased the company's securities within the past 90 days. Bottom line, folks, they're not doing anything wrong. They're not doing anything illegal. It's all above board. Yeah, I do believe that all the advertising and articles coming out have caused a spur, but it's not because they're lying or hyping. It's because they're putting out this information about these deals. I got excited when I seen 128. I got excited when I seen 4,748. And I was reading the news. Well, what if people aren't reading the news? Well, they're going to see it in other places now, including their emails. And that did pump the market. No doubt about it. She was ripping. But they're letting us know that nobody on the inside, the management, and nobody who is putting out these articles is making money on this front. Nobody's selling shares, so it's not a pump and dump, which is what everybody gets worried when you see share volume jump that quick. Now, I don't know what's going to happen Monday. The stock was halted. I don't know if it was unhalted before the market closed. I'm thinking it was. I think Velmore said it did, but we're going to have to find out on Monday. But what we really need to do is check out that chart. Come on. I want to share this with you. Hmm. Not a very big six-month, four-hour chart, is it? No. This is HCNWF. This is Hypercharge Networks. And we're going to be doing all of our charging on... Oh. <laughs> That was easy to do. All of our charting on Think or Swim, which is the free trading platform you get from TD Ameritrade. As I said, this is a six-month, four-hour view, but it only goes back to January 6th because that was their very first day on the market. And she is at $1 right there. She took a big fall down to $0.28 cents here at the beginning of March. Folks, between January and March, we only have four bars on our four-hour chart. She has been under the radar or everybody's been oblivious to her like I was, right? She's in that gap. So anybody on Think and Swim doesn't even know she exists yet. Well, from March until now, there has been a lot of activity, but not a lot of volume. She got trapped here at about 33, 35 cents for a long time. And then the promotional activities began on April 3rd and boom, she exploded. She rode from that 35 cents up to $2.39, falling back to $1.93. And she floated all the way up there on her nine day on the four hour chart. And our technicals, they're ripping, folks. Everything is on fire and going to the moon. Looking at that 20-day, one-hour view. All right, so there's your low bubble. There's your 28 cents. Boy, she bounced off of that real hard, but came right back down. And then slowly, very slowly, she has been working her way up and then got serious when all the promotional activities came out. Lots of volume. She has climbed up here, hit that high, fallen back, bounced off for 20 and come back up. And boy, I like the way that aftermarket activity positioned itself. Does it look like it's dead center to you? You've got this long wick on both sides, a nice square bar, and that is right in the middle. It looks very symmetrical, right? This is a perfect average. The center, the middle of anything is a perfect center. So I'm thinking this was arranged that way. It's not out of control. That is to say, I think it's gonna continue growing. She's got good footing. She's found a solid place to stand and she's gonna take off again. Now what's interesting to me here, we had lots of volume, it climbed and then it fell, but look here, at the very end of the day Friday, we had our largest volume spike of all four days, right then and there. Does that look like it's going to end to you? Our technicals here, they are cooling off. There was a big pullback from $239 back down to $1.92, so you got to expect to see that. But look, we're still in the overbought on the RSI, and all of our... Uh, lines are on the right side. So everything looks good. She just looks like she's cooling down a bit right now. At five day, five minute, 
Well, she's done enough shares now to bring up our 200-day SMA. And she was looking like she was already above it. She was above her 50. Once that 200 comes into the picture, what happens? What do I tell you? The price likes to gravitate to that new SMA on the board. And that's what it looks like happened here. It came in right here. She was climbing. It's like, ooh, there's a new guy on the block. So they had to come down. Stretch to it a couple times, but then started climbing again. And we are on an incline. She is climbing up. She's got volatility. She's bouncing here. And she looks good right now. We got ourselves a nice pennant. The Highs have gotten low, the lows have gotten higher, and she's come to a point and it looks like something's got to happen. Something's got to give right now. And as I said, the volume was getting stronger at the end of the day. Looking at that five minute, five day oscillators, uh, they're cooling off just a wee bit. Everything's holding tight. Nothing looks like it's falling, but nothing looks like it's climbing except the chart. Now, folks, there's been that ton of volume coming in, right? You've got 45 million shares. You've got a financial that's about ready to come out, and every quarter has been growing. We see contracts coming in week after week. They're getting bigger and bigger. They are working with other companies, getting into other networks. I see everything as growing, growing, growing with this company. So, bottom line is, down the road, a long hold, I think this company is great. They've got all the ticks. They're penny stock exempt. Everything looks good on them. But in the short run, I think we've got some volatility going here. We've got to watch this on Monday. I think she was unhalted on Friday. I think there was a lot of excitement at the end of the day here. And we're going to see something happen in the morning. And I'm not quite sure how it's going to end. I'm thinking from the bell to 10 in the morning, you're going to see some real strong growth here. I think it's going to be a little silly. It's just a feeling. At 10 o'clock, I'd be worried. You know how it is. A lot of these stocks run, 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 and then they crash. And boy, when they crash, that's the word for it because they come down hard and hit hard. And I'm always worried about that when I see a stock running from nowhere. And this has been running for four days straight. So one has to be cautious here. However, I think between 9.30 and 10 in the morning is the best time to probably watch this. I think the volume could be silly. You could get yourself a good gain. Be out by 9.55 in the morning, 10 in the morning, you're probably safe with your gains. If she continues to grow, well, you still got your gains. If she falls and abruptly stops climbing, you got your gains. In either case, folks, put this on your watch list. Monday should be a very interesting day for this. And if you do your due diligence, you may agree with me. This is a good long hold stock as well. Remember, the more due diligence you do, the more you're going to know. And the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.